Good morning and welcome, and a special welcome to the, any visitors we have with us today, those listening on the radio and watching on live stream. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Times. Our entrance hymn is from the glory and praise. Sing a new song, number 670. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. <clears throat> the wicked say, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive 
because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning. What were you speaking about, arguing about along the way? This is the question that Jesus asks his apostles. What were you arguing about on the way? And notice they were arguing about who was the greatest, and they were arguing at this at precisely the moment when Jesus had told them that he was going to go to his death. That's fascinating to me, that here Jesus is revealing to them the great extent of his love, even unto death. And they were more concerned about themselves. It's as though you get a prefiguring of what happens on the cross when you have the two thieves on either side of Jesus, and one of them says, if you're really God, save us and yourself. And really, Jesus could have turned to that thief and said, that's precisely what I'm doing. The apostles are arguing amongst themselves about who is the greatest, 
not realizing the great love that Jesus has for each, each one of them. What were you arguing about along the way? This is a question I think that Jesus asks all of us right now, you and I, as we are at this Holy Mass, because probably over this past week or maybe even months, you've had an argument with somebody, maybe your spouse or your kids, a coworker, maybe even a priest. <laughs> because us humans, we, we're good at getting into arguments, aren't we? Because we can argue about all sorts of things. We can argue about the big things, politics, religion, or we can even argue about very small things. Did you take out the trash? Did you empty the dishwasher? Why didn't you do it? <laughs> and everything in between. We can argue about those things. And our Lord, he wants to know about it. Tell him. The apostles, they were silent. They were ashamed about what they were arguing about because really they realized it was kind of embarrassing. You and I, okay, it can be embarrassing to have been impatient and to have gotten all worked up and gotten angry at another person and flustered and argued about something. But our Lord, he wants to know about it. What were you arguing about along the way? And as you reveal that to him, as you open your heart to him, he might be able to give you insight about what you were arguing about and why you were arguing. Maybe it's because you're a little defensive. <laughs> but why are you defensive? Maybe it's because you're trying to protect yourself because you feel as though life is out of your control, which oftentimes life is. So much of life is out of our control. And that makes us afraid. Maybe that's why you're defensive. You're defending yourself against the danger that you don't really necessarily perceive, but what you're afraid of. And so our Lord says, I want you to bring that to me. Bring to me what you're afraid of. So often we try to get control over our lives because we don't think that anybody is in control. When in reality is we have a heavenly father. That's why Jesus at the end here, he brings in the little child and, and wraps it in its, his arms as, a, so, as though to say, this is the greatest. Do you see the one that I love here? This little child? That's you, apostles. I love you like this. I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about who's the greatest. And so sometimes when we've had those arguments or those worries or those things that are out of our control, we need to bring that to the Heavenly Father and we need to let the Heavenly Father be a father to us. So many people are burned out and worked up and have their feathers ruffled because they haven't let the Father be a father. They haven't let themselves be children before God. We've made ourselves too big, too big, to, too big to handle what really is something that God should handle. I don't know about you, but when I hear that question, what were you arguing about on the way? Not only is it an opportunity for me to talk with Jesus at this Mass, but it's also something that kind of points me towards heaven. What I mean by that is there's going to come a time when you and I are going to meet Jesus. And it's going to be a wonderful thing if he's been your friend. Ah, I get to meet my friend. I get to be judged by my friend. And behind him are going to be those pearly gates and the heavenly city and its gold and its light and its glory. And you might even see an angel fly by or a couple of the saints, your friends, peeking around the corner of the gate. And he might ask you a question. And the question might be, what were you arguing about on the way? That is, what were you arguing about in your life what were you angry about and feeling out of control about in your life? 
And I think in that moment, we will have a much better perspective, a perspective that we can have right now, actually. We won't have to wait until later. You can have it now. And the reality is, is that up there, all of this, oftentimes the silliness that we get wrapped up in, it's going to seem like nothing in comparison to the glory of God. And in that moment, we're going to have to tell him, this is what I was spending my life arguing about. You see, sometimes we need to remember that Jesus is the King (laughs) and the Prince of Peace. You heard in that second reading about wisdom. Wisdom is peaceable, it's gentle, it brings about mercy. And when we're arguing, we lose that sense of peace, we lose that sense of mercy and generosity and gentleness because we forget that Jesus is in control. And he already has the victory. And that part is so important. With whatever is going to go on in the big things that people are arguing about in the United States with the big politics things, we must remember that Jesus already has the victory over all of it. All of the wars of the world, Jesus has already conquered all of that. Because he has conquered death itself by his resurrection from the grave. And so you and I can always be hopeful, and you and I can always be confident in that victory that Jesus is going to see us through, even through death itself, for that's how we're going to meet Jesus. Because meeting Jesus at the pearly gates happens after we die. So you and I don't have to be defensive about the things of the world. Yes, we do need to converse about them. We do need to talk about them. There are grave evils that are on the ballot that we're going to have to face and do battle against. But that is a lot different than getting upset at the person next to you and losing the sense of the victory and the sense of peace. Because here's the thing, when I look at that constitutional amendment that's coming up, it's not just simply that, that we're making a vote there, and we are to vote no on that, by the way. And we can say that as, as pre-sends people, it's not the separation of re- church and state. It is something that we should be saying that, that we should not be ki- allowing and, and putting into our constitution the allowing of the killing of the most innocent in our midst. But then, but then if... if if we are to avoid argument, there has to enter into our heart a sense of, of Christ's victory and, and his hopefulness and his peace. And, and I look at the person who might be voting on the other side, and I feel a great pity for them. What drives a person to want to kill a child? What sort of feeling of enslavement or of feeling trapped or even a sense of that they can't find happiness unless they do the things antecedent to that of conceiving a child. I look at that and my heart moves with pity for our situation, that we might have half of our state missing out and not knowing where happiness is found, not knowing where peace is found. And I could get angry at that, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be satisfied. But it moves me to pity and to mercy and to pray. If there is one person I will be angry at, it is the devil himself. I try to punch him in the nose all that I can. (laughs) And you should too. But don't fight each other. What were you arguing about along the way? Lord, there were many things. But Lord, help me to remember that you have always been good to us and that the victory is yours. Help us never to forget that and to therefore be merciful and peaceful and gentle. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence in our Heavenly Father's goodness and His mercy, we bring to Him our petitions. May church leaders be strengthened and encouraged as they work to serve and unite God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May public officials be committed to helping the poor and the vulnerable, working for peace and justice with honesty, integrity, and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor, whether in offices, factories, fields, schools, or homes, that through their work they may experience the dignity of using their gifts to glorify God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer illnesses of mind, body, or spirit, that they receive skilled, tender care, and may their caregivers be inspired and rewarded in their work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May those who mourn be comforted, and may our deceased loved ones know the reward of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our almighty Father, each morning your mercies are renewed. And we beg you in that mercy, increase our faith and as well inspire our charity that we may love you and our neighbor, that we may grow in virtue and be found worthy at the end of our life to enter the joys of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. As our gifts are being prepared, please join in singing from the glory and praise number 525, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 525.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed men in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, as with the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of our souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living in truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things you may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious child in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Er ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patrium Nupotenti, in unitate spiritu sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few brief announcements. GFWC Women's Club of St. Genevieve will be conducting a food drive to benefit St. Genevieve Vincent de Paul Society. Drop-off locations are at Country Mart, Save-A-Lot, and both Bloomsdale Bank locations from 922 through 928. Congratulations to Christy Emanuel and River Slevin, who were baptized last Sunday. And in your kindness, please pray for the repose of the souls of Violet Nagger and Janet Dunlap, whose funeral masses were this past week. And may you all have a very wonderful Sunday and a very blessed week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. And Saint Genevieve, pray for us.